For more than 30 years, Robert Edward Auctions has been the nation's premier auction house specializing in sports memorabilia and trading cards. With significant experience and expertise in all major sport, non-sport, and Americana collectibles, REA has helped clients achieve record-breaking prices for their items and has done so with a reputation for integrity and transparency. By actively partnering with collectors and enthusiasts throughout the entire process, REA has created the hobby's most trusted forum for selling high-quality collectibles. Go to robertedwardauctions.com for more information on how to buy or sell in their next auction. All right, welcome to Episode 12 of Card Matches. I did not play the intro. This is what happens when Danny lets me play with the controls. So. It's so much fun. I'm loving every minute of this. How are you? How are you doing, my friend? Good. I guess we'll use the REA commercial as as the intro. Uh, episode episode twelve, uh, and, and uh, we're off to the worst start out of the twelve uh, today. But it's going to get better. Uh, I promise. Uh, I'll start by saying I'm Danny Black. That's John Newman uh, to the right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for the for the record, we got the lucky glass Coca Cola, nothing else in the bottle. <laughs> so, all right, Danny. Well, you know, you came up with this topic for for this week, and and it's you know when we talk about prospecting, um, you know, we think of rookies or guys before they've really uh, made their impact. Uh, you know, in the majors. And I like to do that. I did a little bit more of that before Bowman became like where you had to mortgage your house to get a half a case or, or a case uh, of it. But, uh, you know, do you ask me the question, can we prospect veterans? Can we prospect guys that aren't in the hall but are, are, are slated to get in or guys that are in the Hall of Fame? And I guess it depends on your definition of prospecting you know the the definition the prospect kind of comes from someone who's not really did it yet but prospecting when you think about in the gold rush times right you're trying to acquire something and so i'm going to use that definition and say yeah you can prospect you know someone uh, about to be in the hall of fame or somebody uh that's already is and uh so I'll let you take it from there. That's just kind of how I interpret it. I was going to say, you're giving away some of your good tips already. Um, yeah, no, I I think the, the reason I like this topic is with Bowman coming out recently, you know, and, and like you said, the prices that are, that are so high um, to get in, to get into, you know, for, for some of these, you know, cards, you're paying, you know, 50, a hundred dollars. Uh, for somebody who with no professional at bats. So the question is, is are there other ways to prospect? And, and, and to your definition, are there other ways to look for guys who might, you know, there might be a little bit of a niche or something else to, to, to go after. And you and I, you know, had a conversation and we realized, you know, let's just, let's just go ahead and, you know, actually make this a show. So where can we look for players? Where are their spots in the market? that we can find that are other than, you know, college, pro college prospects or, or, you know, minor league prospects or international signings, you know, for baseball or, you know, like the college, we just had the NFL draft and, you know, we're going to have all those. So there's a lot of prospecting for the young guys, but what we're talking about is not those guys. So how do we prospect for veterans? Do you want to, uh, you want me to go first? You want to go first here? Well, well, I'll go first because there's an example I'll use that I even kind of enlightened you on, if I may be so bold, right? So Ichiro Suzuki, obviously no one will debate whether he's going in the hall. He's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. And if you look at who's going up against him, he's definitely going to be a first ballot uh, Hall of Famer. He might be the only one that gets in that year. Uh, that's how bad. Uh, the class, you know, who he's, who's eligible the year he's eligible. So uh, I bet this house I'm, I'm sitting in, uh, he's a first ballot, but probably unanimous uh, Hall of Famer. And so 
this is where I'll answer yes, because I'm going to show a card on the screen here. I've talked about this on, on my show, and for some may recognize it, some may not. Let me try to get the glare. There you go. Now, it, some might say, oh, it's the Upper Deck Ovation uh, Ichiro rookie. And you're sort of right, uh, except his American Upper Deck Ovation was 2001. This is a 2000. And, and Upper Deck, uh, just in 2000, made a Japanese edition. So this is Ichiro in his Oryx Blue Wave uniform. It's This card is all in Japanese. If you... You look at the back, there is no English on it. This product was made just for Japan, and it was shipped to Japan. So anything we have here in the States came back over from Japan. Upper Deck did not release it here, as you know, Danny. This was made for the country of Japan only. Very limited amount of boxes. There's only The cards are not individually numbered, but there's only 2,000 of these. Upper Deck has confirmed their print run is 2,000 of every card in the set, including, obviously, it's yep. your, just the card you would want if you were opening uh, packs. Um, and so when I and found out about quick, the card... Just for, yeah, just for comparison, Wander Franco's base card had a half million in, yeah. in, in, in the tops last year. So I just want to give a comparison to 2,000 is super, super short print. Yeah, it, it really is. And look, it, it's an American... You know, I know what you know. We I, we don't have Victor here to 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 fact check us, or, or at least, you know, he's got his definition of rookie cards, right? So this would generally be called an XRC. I'm not going to keep putting up uh, on the screen there. An XRC, right? It's not in uh in his in his Seattle Mariners uniform. It's it's before he got to the big leagues. Um, but the way I look at it, it's it's an American brand, right? This isn't BBM, Japanese. This is Upper Deck. It's Ovation, what you come to expect from Ovation. The seams are raised. It's got the foil behind them. It's a very – I love the aesthetics of the card, too. But when I think about it, that it's on an Upper Deck card. It's his first appearance, as far as I'm concerned on an American brand of, of baseball card. And when I found that out, and then when I initially saw what they were going for, I started to buy these things up. They go for a little more now, as you very well know, and I know because uh, it's getting harder to acquire them. I, 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 I think it's just you and I bidding against each other. Whether you, whether it, yeah, it, it, it could be. So I think there's, you know, that sort of prospecting for a veteran shoe in. Hall of Famer. So I guess to me that answers the question, you know, uh, with, with yes. So so the question is, if we're talking about Ichiro, who else, you know, if we're prospecting Hall of Famers, and, and you know, I didn't come, you know, with this right now, but for me, Albert Pujols, Miguel Cabrera, uh, Ichiro certainly. The question is, is there, you know, is Yadier Molina going to get in? Probably, you know, is he worth buying? Um, uh, you know, there's the old. Let's catcher. let's say, listen, let's go even. Let's go in the way back machine, right? Let's get Doctor Everett Brown and go into DeLorean, right? Ted Simmons recently elected to the Hall of Fame, right? If you were buying Ted Simmons stuff before that announcement came, yep. you did very well, right? Uh, because it obviously anybody who gets elected to the greatest honor in their particular sport, their cards are going to see an uptick, some more than others. Um, I mean, some people said, all right, Ted Simmons got in. I still don't want to buy any of his cards. But if you did buy some of his cards and, and uh, you you made out, and I guess you could say you, you prospected Ted Simmons before the Hall of Fame election and announcement, you that, that investment, if you want to use that, that word, that's bad to some. That uh, you know that paid off for you. Uh, so there's there's a, a really old school, uh, you know, way to prospect a Hall of Famer. And to prove that we're not making this up, he was the most graded uh, Hall of Famer in the two years after he was elected. Um, and, and the reason is is he had very few graded cards out there, but there was a demand then all of a sudden for his graded cards. So, so to your point, John, and, and to show that, um, that's that's really uh, 
re really a, a form of prospecting. Um, and then, you know, this, this is a great question. Uh, what about guys who are only not in the hall because of the steroid area era? Would that be prospecting perhaps? The, it's, I, I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, great, uh, great point by Dr. Steven here. I didn't even think about that, right? There are people who believe that Mark McGuire, uh, Barry Bonds is probably the better of the example, that believe someday the Veterans Committee is just going to say, listen, these guys, listen, a lot of people were doing it. These guys, you know, were Hall of Famers, even without steroids. You could definitely make that case more than anything for Barry Bonds, right? Before he went from a, a six and a half size hat to a seven and seven eights, right? When he was wearing a six and a half hat, he already had a Hall of Fame career. So while I don't like steroid users and the players that did it, you know, I can't sit here and tell you that Barry Bonds didn't put up the numbers uh, before that. Same thing, Roger Clemens on the on the mound side, right? Uh, he, had, he had a Hall of Fame stat line probably before he started using um, so if you're of the ilk that believes Clemens, Bonds, McGuire, uh, those that list of guys, Sosa probably on the outside looking in, they are on the outside looking in right now. But if you believe that at some day, right, they're going to get in somehow, some way, you know, uh, maybe even when they pass away, that's when they'll put them in. So they don't get to enjoy that honor as, as harsh as that may sound. So you could, but like, listen, their stuff's going reasonably priced for, for not being in the hall. If you think they're going to get in and you buy a bunch of, you know, 87 Fleer update bonds or 85 uh, tops McGuire's uh, they're, they're obviously, if they ever do get in, those cards are going to see an increase in value. And then there's sneaky players. Adrian Beltre. Very, very yeah. good chance he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, his card, his cards are pretty low priced compared to some of these other guys. Um, if you're, you know, he played for a lot of teams, um, so I don't know that he has one hometown. You know, he played a lot of years in Texas at the end, but you know, he came up as a like twelve year old with the Dodgers um, and hit thirty homers. So I mean, you know, he, he had a huge career. Um, but I don't know that he gets the hobby love right now. And I think when he finally does get to the hall, there would be a big bounce on, on a player like Beltre. Yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. Look at the numbers. And that's a great point with him, right? He's a, That's a good word for it, right? Sneaky. He's just not a guy that, you know, is in everybody's, you know, vernacular, right? But when you look at the numbers, he's getting in. And so a lot of people who weren't buying him, once he gets in, they're going to, you know, go back and try to buy, buy his car. Here's the, here's, the, here's the golden rule with Hall of Fame, right? I don't care who it is, Ted Simmons included. Once that announcement comes down, people are seeking out their cards. Some more than others. I get that, yep. right? Well, you know, did everyone knock down doors to get a Ted Simmons rookie? No. But more Ted Simmons rookies were sold after the Hall of Fame announcement. Uh, most likely than than uh, prior to, not all the time, but the the, the time span uh, between the two. That's just you know that's just the the, the you know the, the nature of the beast. So you know Beltray, I look at guys like that um, that maybe people have forgotten about, but are going to get in. You know another guy. How about this one? I, I just thought about this. Okay, uh, his cards aren't super cheap, especially his rookie, but Pete Rose. Right, no one can argue a that he's a Hall of Famer. On, yeah, he's a Hall of Famer when it comes to stats, but he bet on the game. That's against the rules, and he was banned. What I think is going to happen with Pete Rose, he's the all-time. I think what's I think it's it's sort of already agreed upon, at least insiders in baseball or the commissioner. They're, the, the way they're going to punish Pete is they're going to wait till he passes away. And then they're going to elect him into the hall so he doesn't get to. And you could say, man, that's pretty harsh, but I think that's what happened. So if you have a lot of Pete Rose cards and are buying Pete Rose cards now, they're going to see an uptick if and when 
that day actually does occur. Well, don't you think his rookie card um, is a little higher in price because people feel feel that to a certain degree? I think his rookie card's already high priced because of the body of work, right? No one, even people who don't like Pete Rose, even the most staunchest Pete Rose haters, which I'm not really one, will say Pete Rose is a Hall of Fame baseball player. Guy got 200 hits almost every year. He's the all-time hit king. Um, no one hustled harder than him, um, you know, and uh, maybe not the nicest guy in the world. But you should have seen me run after this earlier. I promise you I outran yeah, Charlie Hustle. Yeah. So, you know, he never got benched for not running hard uh, for, on a ground ball that he hit, right? So, so uh, yeah, I think, I, you know, I think people just recognize greatness, whether he gets in the Hall of Fame or not. So I think that's where the – the rookie card loves come from. But if he gets in, Danny, even as expensive as a 1963 Topps Pete Rose rookie is already, It'll it's go. going to go up uh, even further, especially high grade stuff and, and all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, I mean, I think this is making sort of the point that you could, to me, prospecting is like putting money into some cards with the hope that they pan out. Either the player itself tear, starts tearing it up, or in this case, what we're talking about retired players, that they get an accolade that they probably deserve, but maybe whether it's steroids or betting on baseball, that's what's keeping them from getting that accolade. Great comment here from Mookie. Uh, can you speculate on current Hall of Famers? I wonder if they get a bump when documentaries drop. Nolan, Reggie, Willie. All had recent docs. I wonder if they saw a slight bump. Yogi uh, doc, uh, yeah, actually uh, in the movie theaters. Uh, was it yesterday or today for his birthday? Uh, it had a limited release for the Yogi Berra movie. Um, so, yes, absolutely. We, we uh, saw that in the hobby world with The Last Dance with uh, the Chicago Bulls. I mean, players other than Michael Jordan saw a bump on that. Uh, it, it all depends. I mean, Derek Jeter got a little bit of a bump when the captain came out. But some of these guys, you know, it, 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 it's too new, I think, or the stories are too niche. I, I don't, you know, I, I think it, it's got to be something grand um, and something widely, widely circulated. If it's a limited release that not a lot of people get into or it's already the fans that, that already like the player, I don't think you're going to see the same bump. I think something like The Last Dance you know, during the pandemic, everybody watched it. It got everybody pumped up. I don't know other than maybe, you know, I'd want, I'd be curious on the numbers of how many people were not familiar with Nolan Ryan who watched the Nolan Ryan documentary um, that learned, you know, that, that went and invested in his cards. Yeah. And, and, you know, even talking what Mookie has, I agree with him. You can speculate with current players, right? If you think Mookie sure. Betts is on a hall of fame track, right? I'll use one of my favorite dudes. Uh, I'm going to let the, it's not a secret. He's, he's an all-star player, not having a great start this year, but I love Trey Turner. Trey yep. Turner is a guy under the radar. He, you know, he doesn't elicit the same response. You say Trey Turner, you say Mike Trout, you know, you say Trey Turner, Mookie Betts, even, uh, you're not going to get the same sort of effect. Right. But when, you know, bar an injury, uh, you know, the famous two words, right. When Trey Turner's career is over, he's the first battle Hall of Famer. You know, if everything tracks the way it is. Well, just for know, his sliding alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a guy like, and he's, he, he plays great defense, right? Trey Turner's a guy, and listen, I'm going to, I'll just, and I'm already got a, you know, a half a, sh a shoebox full of rookies, okay, uh, of Trey Turner. I have autographed RPA. Stuff of Trey Turner. So I guess you could say I'm prospecting Trey Turner, even after the fact that he's even established himself now as a bona fide all star and major leaguer because his cards to me are undervalued. So I think that's another of the bylines here is you can you can pro, you can buy cards that you feel are undervalued now that at some point that's not going to be the case anymore. It's going to be an uptick, right? It's the reverse of Mike Trout. There's many that say, like, Mike Trout's already got, like, his stuff goes for, for what it goes for. Like, it's not going to get 
a big jump. He's getting the Hall of Fame effect during his playing career. So I look for guys. Mookie Betts is probably a good example. Trey Turner for me personally. Guys that I think will be Hall of Famers, but people aren't really looking at him right now. How about Mookie Wilson? <laughs> I just I I, I want to know which how far we're going to prospect. Okay, so yeah, I, I like Mookie Wilson as a Mets guy. Don't get me wrong, but Mookie <laughs> Betts is a better quality player, right? You know, yeah, fair, fair enough. Um, so I wanted to go through some of, and you've touched on some of them already, but I have three kind of categories that I look at when when I'm prospecting veterans, and this is not something that that I've started doing, but something that, that kind of for a while, um, post hype prospecting. What is that? Well, a lot of a lot of rookies and a lot of guys come up with a lot of hype. Luis Robert with with with, with the White Sox. He uh, was a top prospect in 2018, 2019, 2020. He finally makes his major league debut. Tons of hype. Well, here we are in 2023, and and this could be a breakout year for him. But his card prices from where they were in 18, 19, 20, you know, even 21, they've come way down. So, you know, if you want to prospect on the fact that he's going to be an MVP candidate in the next couple of years and that that post hype, you know, kind of bubble pops to me, that that's an area and that's the type of player that I like to look at. It it is certainly not a perfect formula. Um, You're going to take a chance on guys like a Nick Senzel, a Jonathan India, a Taylor Trammell, a Kyle Lewis, a Joe Adele. I mean, a lot of guys that, that had a lot of high rankings. And and it, it's figuring out which ones you think have a chance to actually reach the reach their, their original uh, talent level. And and I would even say, um, you know, as a, a, a C.J. Abrams, you know, who's been a prospect for a while and now with the Nationals, was a top 10 pick, you know, and even though he's only played a year or two, a lot of the hype, you know, that he had originally and he had when he was going up the top 100 boards has come down with his prices. So that that's one category for me. John, is that something that makes sense, you know, in, in my mind? I do. I do it. You mentioned a guy I did it with, Louis, Louis Robert, right? When he got hurt, everybody jumped off the ship. It was like the ship was sinking. He thought he died. I, when yeah. people dump in their collections of Louis Robert, you think the guy died or had like a tore out both both ACLs and his career was over. They were they were couldn't it was like hot potato. I bought some of that stuff when people were panic selling because I still believe in a, a Louis Robert. Uh, another guy, uh, great list that you gave. Another guy that came to mind as you were saying those names, Jared Kellenick, former Matt. We can great name. Uh, but man, did he struggle? He was striking out forty to forty-five percent of the time, batting one eleven. Uh, I don't. I haven't checked recently. He had a great start to this year. I have a lot of Jared Kellenick stuff. Now I will be a hundred percent transparent. I was prospecting him because being a Mets fan, and I knew about him early, maybe earlier than most, because he was a Met. So I had a lot of stuff. Now when he struggled, I didn't buy anymore. I had what I had. I didn't sell. I didn't panic. So I just kept. So, yeah, I wish he was still a Met. But, sure, I'm hoping he he performs well because I have, you know, quite a bit of stuff. A a great comment from Dan Ryan with Russell Wilson's terrible year under uh, Nathaniel Hackett last year. And some of that is because of Nathaniel Hackett. Here in, in Syracuse, we're very familiar with Nathaniel Hackett, how he became an NFL coach. Uh, I'm I'm not even going to go there. You're, you're so very anti. Now. You're very anti some coaches in the NFL. I'm well, just going to say that he's well. I'm uh, yeah, and he's he'll make my not great coaches uh, list uh, along with Matt Canada. Uh, but uh, so who I'm dress I'm trying to dress like today with my Steelers visor and my black Under Armour shirt to. To, he's uh, applying, for, he's applying for the job as offensive coordinator, is what John. It's because I can't do any worse. He, he ranked near the bottom of almost any offensive uh, category the last, not last year, but the last two years, I might add. All right, let's make this, let's not make this a uh, bag on, on Matt Canada. But yeah, it's a great example Dan brings, right? Uh, Russell Wilson is a talented quarterback. Now, I won't say it's all 100% Hackett's fault, but yeah, it, it, some of it is. So if you believe 
a lot of it is, right? It's a great time to buy Russell Wilson. His stuff has taken a perciferous drop. Uh, believe me, uh, I've sold some stuff recently at prices. I was, you know, it is what it is, right? That was uh, shocking to me. But you, you got to you gotta go with comps and what the market bears, and, and that, that's, that's what it was. So someone might get a great buy that bought those graded Russell Wilson rookie cards from me, right? He, next year he turns it back on, and he looks like, uh, you know, dangerous that we were are familiar with, with the Seahawks and Pete Carroll. Then, then people got some great, uh, you know, great buys on, on the downturn. So uh, that's the fun, right? It's kind of guessing who's, who's a good buy because of a situation like that. Can I throw one at you? Is he a Hall of Fame prospecting? I think if he can put it more years together, three, four, five more years of like all pro level quarterback, um, then, yeah, I think he's got he, he can get in the hall. He now plays in the AFC, right? That's a very quarterback heavy conference now. You got Aaron Rodgers coming over. You already got uh, Mahomes. That's in his division. The, 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 Justin the Herbert, North, the Joe North. Burrow, uh, Lamar Jackson. I hate to say it, right? So, uh, you know, will that hurt him or help him? I guess it depends. If he if he's going toe to toe with them guys, numbers wise, and making Pro Bowls, it's going to help him because he's making Pro Bowls in a tougher AFC over NFC, right? And so that will actually buffer his his Hall of Fame resume. So I guess it's however you had your bets. But I think when he was in Seattle before last year, no one would argue he wasn't on the Hall of Fame track. Now, last year was pretty abysmal, believe me. Uh, you know, in almost every fantasy football league I was in, he was cut. Imagine <laughs> Russell Wilson on your fantasy football waiver wire that's how bad his year was it's true. that people picked up other quarterbacks off free agency i know we're not talking hobby and it's you know but that's that's where he was with his stat line last well, year it speaks to the value of his cards and and whether or not you think he's going to be a hall of famer um there's a lot of people that that i think were hall of fame prospecting on kyler murray a little too early um, and you know, so Russ is far enough into his career that I think it's a fair question. Now, if you're talking about NFL hall of fame prospecting, I mean, realistically, there's not a lot of value outside of quarterbacks. So if you're looking at quarterbacks and, and actually I'm going to, this is my number two, you know, which you've already spoken about is the hall of fame prospecting. And we touched on baseball, but in the NFL, to me, it's a quarterback driven, uh, you know, position, uh, league value. Um, so whether or not you like him, you know, it's going to be Aaron Rodgers. Uh, you know, who else at this point is a Hall of Fame quarterback in the NFL? You know, with Brady gone, with Breeze Listen, gone. I think Patrick Mahomes. I know he's young and he's, he's well, only played – Five years, you know, four or five years. His prices Again, might already be up there. There may not be a value. They buy. are. They are. They are. But if you like, so here's my scouting report or my prospect report. I, I think he's got three more rings in him. So if you believe that, like I do, I think he's got three rings and, and, and a heck of a stat line when his career is over. That even at his prices now, if you bought the right cards, or, you know what I mean? You can still... And you're patient. You don't mind waiting, and and that's kind of what you want to do. You can you can do it. That's uh, a great comment from Brendan. Yeah, Brendan. Uh, what do you uh, think about post career hype prospects? Ex example: Peyton Manning, LeBron James, seeking Hollywood hype, betting on Lamelo Ball doing the same thing in the distant future. Well, Lamelo Ball, I would call a long term prospecting, but as far as the idea in general, I, I think it's a it's a great idea for Hall of Famers to separate themselves from other Hall of Famers. Um, the, the value, as I've talked about on on a lot of shows, uh, value in cards and value in, in, in on the field are two different things. I love Peyton Manning cards right now. Well, we've had this conversation, Danny, even off the yep. air. I still buy. You know, when I go to eBay or any kind of selling platform. One of the one of the kind of my go to searches is Peyton Manning RC. I look for Peyton Manning rookies because they're like, look at his numbers. He's got two rings. 
Look at his stat line. He's one of the greatest quarterbacks ever to play the game. He's got two rings. Like Dan Marino is one of the greatest quarterback ever to play the game. And unfortunately, you know, he made the Super Bowl's rookie year, didn't win it, never got back again. No one will argue that Dan Marino's not a Hall of Fame quarterback or a great quarterback. Peyton, Man- Peyton Manning is that and more and has two rings. And is to me, his rookie cards are still undervalued to, to this day. And he's having, let's be real, he's having a Hall of Fame post-career with all the media stuff he's doing. He's hilarious. He's a, he's, he's going to probably be on a sitcom at some point. That's how funny he is. All the commercials he does, he does different segments for different uh, networks. Uh, with him and his brother doing the Monday night uh, commentating, it's just... He's just a, he's a hard guy not to like. You like you could be a, a rival team, and he's a hard guy uh, not to like. And I think he's still a uh, like when you look at his cards, they're still undervalued. And why? And I someone asked me because I did a show about it, and someone you know I got some feedback. And they're like, well, why is that? Why is he undervalued? And it's it's two it's a it's one name, right? Tom Brady, right? He played. In the shadow of Tom Brady in the same conference uh, when when Brady was with the Patriots, and let's be real, Peyton Manning would probably but, have more than two rings if it wasn't for Tom Brady. Other people but, would have you rings. Want to be real? His brother also did better in Super Bowls than him, which is a weird dynamic. Yeah, but a Peyton's a better quarterback over. But if you look at the value of their of their stuff, it should be nowhere close, and it is. Yeah, no, I hear you. And to me, you know, we I, and I don't want to make this the Peyton Manning versus Tom Brady show, but I, I can make an argument. Peyton Manning might be a better quarterback. He doesn't have the better resume. He might be the better quarterback. And and some people uh, would agree uh, w- with that, you know. And so Peyton Manning, uh, kudos to Brendan for me. I don't know if he knew I was buying Peyton Manning stuff up, but. You know, uh, you know, I, I am another guy. You want to go back? You know, we went back with Ted Simmons in baseball. Let's do that with a guy from football that's no longer with us, unfortunately. It's a guy I love. I'm a Steeler fan, but this is one of my favorite non-Steeler guys, and that's Walter Payton. Like, his rookie cards are still – you can get, like, a pretty high-grade Walter Payton rookie for under four figures. And to me, that makes – that's crazy to me. And uh, look, at this is a guy who missed one game his rookie year and played 13 seasons, never missed another game. NFL football, there's guys in basketball taking load management days off. There's guys in baseball slipping in the shower and missing two weeks and then doing rehab stints in double A. First Walter of all, Payton, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Walter Payton's a running back, carrying the ball 20, 25 times a game. Missed one game in his career with a fractured ankle his rookie year, and he wanted to play in that game. The doctors would not let him on the field. They literally had to hold him back and take his uniform from him. Ronnie and, and like cut off a finger. He was a yeah. Walter Payton was a win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you can go back even further for undervalued guys that you could probably you could you you know now you could buy twenty Walter Payton rookies right and prospect that way. But the question then is, will they ever get the bump they deserve? He's already in the hall. You know, unfortunately, he's no longer with us, so he's not like he's doing TV and and stuff where he's still sort of – Not so uh, much. You know, so that you got to take that into a factor with if you're of the ilk where you're putting money into certain cards, you got to keep that in mind. I do like uh, this comment uh, from Chris. Uh, look at Bob Euchre cards. Uh, he was not a great baseball player and then became an actor on Mr. Belvedere and his cards went up. Chris, uh, I don't know how old you are, but uh, more than Mr. Belvedere, he was Johnny Carson's regular and fill-in. And uh, that's where he got his break from. And Mr. And, yeah, and don't forget this one. Just a little bit outside. Right, and eventually Major League. Yeah, <laughs> Two or three generations of Euchre uh, yeah. stories. Uh, my favorite was that Rawlings hired him uh, to a contract as long as he promised not to use their equipment. So <laughs> uh, I could do that. Okay. So you, we, we've talked about a couple of the things that I wanted to uh, go over, but I had one more uh, on my list if I can break it out. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Okay. The greatness breakout. And this would be Shohei Otani when he got hurt 
because he had that greatness hype. And then he got hurt, but you had to predict a greatness breakout or he was never going to get back to those prices. Aaron Judge, did you really think early last year that he could make the run the whole year? You know, did you believe in the greatness breakout? You know, this season, somebody's going to do something great. You know, we're going to talk later about home run hitters. You know, is, is somebody going to do what Judge did last year? Or is somebody going to set a new stolen base record, you know, that nobody's stolen 100 bases in however many years? Anything, you know, that I call that greatness breakout is is a, is a wonderful thing to look for because that will get a bump every single time. Yeah, well, and listen, let's talk about one of your guys, right? Cedric Mullins, 30 for 30, right? Yep. People started buying him a little bit. I didn't really buy him. It just seemed like everything I opened at that time, I I was a Cedric Mullins magnet. And he just homered. He just homered while you said that, by the way. So that's how yes. he did. Yeah. So, I, like, he's not a bad little ball player. But, like, he's, hobby love and, and being a good ball player are, are two separate shows, right? Yep. And so – you know, it's not just having a great year. Like I'm, listen, I'm in New York. Aaron Judge had an incredible year. We don't have to, we don't have to b- debate that. But I'm, if I'm looking long term, there's a reason I don't have a lot of Aaron Judge cards uh, in my PC. And any any Aaron Judge card I have, you'll see it at the show when I'm set up at it. Because I, you know, when you look at the history of bigger frame guys in Major League Baseball, what happens, right? They break down just like I'm breaking down. At, at, Chris, you look much Chris younger. I'm at, sorry. And he's a better looking guy than me. But you're right. But those bigger guys, they, I mean, can can someone break the mold short? Has it happened to everyone? No. But, you know, we've already seen some injuries with Aaron Judge in his younger years. You know, when they signed that, when they, they the Yankees gave him that big contract, I'm like, man, that's crazy to me. When, you know, they took the Giants off off the hook and, and save them. Like that's a, you know, that's, that's a lot of money for a guy that might miss 20, if not more games a year, potentially. And, and, and on the back end of that contract, I don't know what you're, you're getting anymore. Like, and that, listen, I'm not rooting against Aaron judge. He's, he's, he's all accounts. He's a nice guy. I'm just stating sort of, you know, uh, th- that's kind of the track record for guys that frame. Let, let me speak to kind of both comments here. Brendan uh, says, I don't know how to predict anomalies yet. Excellent point. I guess let me give give the reverse of what I was speaking to, is if you know a guy is going to hit 300 wins or some of the numbers that still matter, 500 home runs, there are greatness breakouts that you can spot a year or two or three in advance and take advantage of that. If a guy is in the prime of his career and is at 400 home runs, those cards are going to be a lot cheaper than they're going to be when that player gets to 500 home runs. So the greatness breakout can be seen a couple different ways, and sometimes it is just a statistical number. But but I, that's all under one umbrella to me. Um, yes, no, I don't expect anybody to be able to predict uh, thing things uh, before the season. But sometimes when the season gets started, uh, you can take a chance, you know, on somebody who starts out hot. And uh, that, that, that's a way to prospect. These are not ways to, to guarantee success. These are ways to prospect. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's tough, right? It, 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 you never know. And, and that's why it's prospecting. That's To me, that's the definition of prospecting is you are putting whatever it is, a dollar, a thousand dollars, you know, there's the different levels of it into some cards hoping that there is uh you know it pays off you're hoping it's worth more at some point you're hoping it's worth more than you paid for i think we do that even subconsciously it doesn't even have to be you know you buy a pack of cards for five bucks right you're hoping there's more than five dollars worth of cards in the pack when you rip it open i think we do that when we buy single cards too i hadn't thought about this but you know, one of the things that I really like are dual auto cards where you have a Hall of Fame, you know, kind of legend with a younger current player. And I think that always leaves room for growth because if they're putting those players together, the chances are the active player, you know, has a chance to, to, to become a Hall of Famer or, or grow into something more. So, you know, I'm going to throw that in there that I love when you see an active player with a Hall of Famer on a dual card, dual patch, dual auto. 
uh, something because I think that that is you know not only a really cool card, but a card that has a chance to have some sort of pop on it. And I uh, wanted to show, read this comment also. Uh, I've been buying Antonio Gates and Steven Jackson on possible Hall of Fame prospecting over the last two years, and I love both players and would be happy to hold all cards for long term. Well, that that's the key. Um, and, uh, you know, those are interesting names. I think Antonio Gates probably goes in first ballot. Um, and, and that'll be interesting. I think tight ends are going to start getting uh, hopefully a little bit more love with what Travis Kelsey's been doing. Um, and, and I think that'll help some other positions start getting some value. I will say this. Antonio Gates probably has a better shot than Steven uh, Jackson when you compare the two and and it's a good thing with, with Dan and, and I don't want to speak for him you're, you're getting those two guys probably very cheap where listen if it doesn't work out you're probably depending unless you're buying you know heavy heavy loads of them you're not going to really lose too much so it's a great way to hedge you know and again if they get in of course their rookie cards are going to get an uptick at least initially too that would be these are two guys where if they get in i'm probably selling right away like it, this is going to be just one of those influx bounces and then it kind of settles right down so you'd I mean, sell, you'd I mean, sell before the jacket was off yeah i would sell very <laughs> i would sell very quickly because the demand even even if they're hall of famers that demand is going to be high, highest that month, right? And then it's going to all quell down. And and while they're still Hall of Famers, the demand for the card, everyone who wanted the cards had has probably gotten the cards at that point. So you, it's like a hot potato, right? For that music, you know, musical chairs. Before the music stops, you want to be sitting down in one of those chairs and and not having those cards anymore. And I'm not trying to be mean. They're both Hall of Fame type players. Um, I don't know about Steven Jackson getting in. My my gut tells me, no. I think Antonio Gates was one of the best tight ends for many many seasons. And believe me, as a guy who played fantasy football from the first year, it was invented. He was a very high pick in a lot of drafts, and uh, uh, you know doesn't probably get enough love. Some with that tight end, right? But you made a great point. Guys like Travis Kelsey, even George Kittle. Uh, and those guys are starting to bring more attention back to the position. Um, yeah, and, and and the biggest thing Dan said that I love is that he would hold on to the cards no matter what. Um, and, and that's the thing. You know, you shouldn't load up on 100 cards of a player you don't like. Um, you know, that's just not a way. And, yes, we are uh, Yogi Berra fans uh, here as well. Um, so appreciate all the comments. Yeah, real quick shout out. Got a great comment uh, before the show uh, uh, from jo uh, John Grukowski, uh who says he catches us on Spotify on on Mondays, and uh, so we appreciate that. And we appreciate everyone, whether you're watching us live right now or if you just don't want to see two ugly guys live. I don't blame you uh, catching us on the audio uh, podcast version too. Uh, talking about smart plays, that one's kind of smart. Uh, as well we're we're actually uh recommended to be audio only we had to sign a waiver with you with, with uh youtube <laughs> um i w wanted to re read this comment real quick chris said i sold my brady's before his last super bowl i saw them going down i was wrong i did not want to lose out on value well Bra brady's a generational player uh, there's certain guys the rules just don't apply to and, and there's you just got to accept that the Trouts, the Brady's, um, the Mantles of the world, you know, and yes, I put them all in the same sentence. Uh, they're they're going to hold value and go up over time, kind of no matter what, and, and break break the mold on most of this. And we, we you know, we've all made, I don't want to say mistakes. We've all. Maybe, I've made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, we've sold too soon. We sold, tried to sell and it's too late, right? It's, I could write a book. Uh, on that stuff, Chris. So don't don't feel uh, too bad. Mike's having fun with some great Yogi Berra uh, isms and one-liners that uh, he was so famous for. And he was uh, he was a character uh, in his own right. And uh, you know, you know but he's another guy. Like we're joking about Yogi, but when you look at his resume, you know how many rings he has, and he's a Hall of Fame catcher. His cards are well undervalued when compared to players of his era. 
Well, and this goes to the comment we got er earlier tonight about, you know, athletes post career when they get into, you know, some sort of Hollywood or, you know, the last dance or they have a documentary yogis, you know, and I said it, 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 it has to have big enough distribution. It's got to be watched by enough people. Like the last dance was yogis uh, movie may, may have that um, being a Yankee, you know, having his granddaughter, Lindsay promoting it everywhere, being in movie theaters. Um, and I think it'll be streaming. Um, I, I think the Yogi hype is a hundred percent accurate and, and, and deserve it quite frankly. You know, what would be, you know, what would be funny. It would be a play off something Yogi Berra would do if he was still with us. The movie, name it Yogi Berra Part 2. Even though, you know. Hey, boo-boo, that's the end of that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, not sure if you already uh, mentioned Albert Pujols. Yeah. We mentioned him very early with Miguel Cabrera. I kind of put the two of them together. Um, but but those, but he's he's definitely a guy where if you look at his value now compared to where it will be for his Hall of Fame bump, um, he's he's just undervalued. I think the end of his Anaheim years um, re really hurt him. Yeah, he bounced around at the end. He went to the Dodgers, what, for a year, maybe two years. I think that sort of, like, people kind of perceived it as he's just kind of hanging on to get, like, the home run number uh, that he, uh, what was it, 700, I believe. So I think there was a sort of a negative connotation there. But even with that being said, he's a Hall of Famer. Um, yeah. And that's that sometimes happens when guys maybe hang on too long. They're, you know, the public kind of views them in a negative light. But then when that Hall of Fame announcement is made, all that's forgotten and people are scrambling and clamoring uh, for cards of that particular uh, person. Absolutely. Um, did you have anybody else on your list? I'm no, it was it was great, and uh, you know, people brought up some great names in the chat that weren't in my head that were, you know, should have been right. And that's what that's what's great about doing a live show is you can get help from uh, from everyone in the chat room. So uh, you know, uh, yeah, Pools is again underrated player, right? Uh, when when we don't talk about what he did. Uh, uh, enough, you know, whatever he, whoever he played with the last few years and then finishing. And I thought it was kind of cool going back to St. Louis and kind of where it all started and, and putting the cherry on but top of a hall of fame career. Are his prices under Wander Franco? Well, Wander's having a, a pretty good year so far. Like, but, but yeah, just like, comparing like, the careers and comparing the prices is crazy. Yeah, well, listen, listen. We, we, if you want to open that Pandora's box, man, look at what some of these prospect colored autos go out of for New Bowman, right? They haven't even. Yeah. They're three, four yeah. years. They're three, four years, and I'm not talking about the Jackson Holidays. I'm talking about even other guys. They're three, four years away, right? And they're bringing four figures, and that's why. To, that's why I like buying vintage graded Hall of Fame rookie cards because uh, rather than buy a prospect that's four years away for. Fifteen hundred. I'm gonna I'm gonna go buy a a guy that's kind of cemented a Hall of Fame career and, and it's the book is closed. Um, yeah, I think uh, people want to hear you uh, talk talk about that a little bit, but but we could how about we'll do a whole show on that. Yeah, we we could Maddenly right. I just uh, you're gonna hear uh, heavy J Jason Schwartz on on an upcoming episode. And we do a really, uh, a, you know, uh, an eight to ten minute segment on another guy that probably should be in the hall for playing this game, Steve Garvey, ten ten time All Star, Steve Garvey, overrated, Hall of Fame. overrated. I don't know, man. You got to remember the era he played in. Is you know, if you compare him to today's stats, you know, you if he maybe, played on the Brewers instead of the instead of in that market. He he wouldn't be he wouldn't be in there, but I can't wait to listen to the the the, uh, the other side. Well, you you hear because we both made a we both made a case for for Mr. Garvey. Oh God, we're now we're getting all the names: Keith Hernandez, Dick <laughs> Allen. Uh, we got Nolan Arenado, Paul Goldschmidt, Joey Votto. Yes, I, actually, the, this is the whole point of this conversation. It is the these are all non-prospects that you can prospect. Um, 
or you know simply collect them if you enjoy them that that's the whole purpose of all of us yep um so all right let's uh let's move on and pay some bills experience quality consistency and the quickest turnaround times in the grading industry we are proud to partner with sgc grading Check them out at www.gosgc.com. And if we're playing that, it means that we're about to... Welcome to the failure segment, where John and Danny share their picks sure to go wrong. Here we go. Let's have a little fun. Who do we think is going to win the MLB home run title this year? These are uh, the current odds as of FanDuel. Uh, earlier today, we got Pete Alonso as the favorite, followed by Aaron Judge, Matt Olson, Max Muncy. Raphael Devers, Kyle Schwarber, Mike Trout, and Jordan Alvarez. Um, so I was just wondering what everybody thought. Uh, it's been an early start for for uh, Alonzo. There's been some other guys that are not on this list in the odds. Patrick Wisdom. Um, but uh, I I know uh, let, let's let's take two picks because this is a shot. But but I I know who I like. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one on the board and one not on the board. Um, okay. And I'm not. But here's the crazy thing: the one on the board is the first one, and I'm not picking him because he's on the Mets. He's. I think he's going to get it, and 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 that's Alonzo. He just hits home runs. Uh, sometimes he hits them when we're losing five nothing, and it's a solo shot. He's gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna lead in home runs. But the, I'm gonna go off the board with my second pick. Uh, or do you want me to wait and and you? No, bet? no, no. Go off the board. I want to see if you're wrong first. Uh, Randy Rosarina from from uh, Tampa. Nice pick. Uh, kind of a dark horse. Uh, not on this list here from from DraftKings, but uh, I think he's got ten or eleven. He's uh, definitely you know a power hitter, and uh, you know I I think he could hit forty home runs and 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 win the, the home run. Uh, uh, crown. I just put up the list right now just to show us some of the leaders. Pete Alonzo with 13, Muncie Wisdom, Devers Olsen, Rosarina with 10, Renfro, uh, Brent Rooker, and Rowdy Telez um, are all your. How about Brent Rooker? Who would have guessed Brent Rooker, possible home run champ? Um, I think that I don't know if he's possible home run champ, but he uh, can certainly hit them. Uh, Mark Hoyle, you are correct. Um, now, listen, I love Mark. Mark Mark knows I love him. So he's, you know, Devers. And listen, he's a great player, but he's not really, no, he's more of a gap type, high average hitter, super productive, all star. Like, I'd love to have him on the Mets. I'm not, I'm, I, but he's not, I don't see him being like a 40 home run guy. I mean, he might have some years where he hits 40, but I don't, I don't, he's just an all around great player. I don't look at him as a, like Alonzo is going to hit lots of home runs and bat 240, 250. Uh-huh. Devers is a better player overall. That's my point with that, but not so much known as a, a you know a home run guy in the true sense of the of the word. I think in that ballpark, um, the type of hitter he is, it's just been a matter of time till he puts it all together. And uh, I think in a year where he might be able to go for the fences a little bit more. Uh, you know, carrying that lineup in, in a little bit of a down year. Uh, I think he's got a chance. So I'm, I'm going to take Devers as my first one, but but I, I got to take Jordan Alvarez uh, as my second choice. I mean, he, he to me, he's the second coming of, of Willie McCovey. Um, just, just unbelievable natural power to all fields. Uh, here, here's a great comment. Otani, comeback kid not. Um yeah, I don't think he's going to win the home run title. But uh, I do really like uh, the power there. So those are my two. I, I, I think Jordan's also a good card, by, by the way. Um, I, for some reason, I think he's still underrated. And so is Randy or Rose Arena, if, if, if you want my card take on that. Um, yeah, Randy's been heating up. Randy's been hot since, uh, seems like, since the World Baseball Classic. Yeah, he just doesn't get, like, the, the probably the hobby love he should based on how he performed. I wonder if people just think he's older than he actually is because it seems like he's been around longer than he actually has. That's a great question. Do you have any idea how old he is? 
No, I don't know if he knows this, how old he is. This is this is live. He's twenty eight years old. So yeah, so he's got easily five. Is he years. not twenty eight years old until Joe Buck says he's twenty eight years old like five times? Right. <laughs> It's like they're saying Beetlejuice three times. You're not your age until Joe Buck says, and he's Juan Soto. Did you know he's 21 years old? Until he does that to Randy Arena with 28, he's not 28. I got news for you. If he's only 28, he's got a good five years uh, of quality time. Uh, I just want to clean up a, a couple of comments here. Getting back to uh, Steve Garvey, Mike uh, – Petty uh, says, I love Garvey, grew up watching him at Dodger Stadium. He was a written in vote for the 74 All Star game, then won the MVP in it. Yes, that is true. He was a write in vote. Um, I think because he was not supposed to, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, he was not supposed to make the team that year. Um, and he made it late in spring training or the beginning of the year. But please correct me on that. Um, Beetlejuice 2 in the making with John Newman. Absolutely. It's showtime. Um, anytime I can do my my uh, Beetlejuice, it's showtime. <laughs> Mookie uh, says, uh, careful, those guys who did a World Baseball Classic effectively played about a quarter season before opening day. Uh, Randy Peters out. Um, maybe. Um, That's a know, great point, though. That's a great point that they've, they've got, you know, probably the equivalent of maybe – you know, 20 major league games sort of in, you know. It was in Lewis spring training. So I, 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 to me, I don't think it's. A yeah, thing. that's true too. That's true too. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it was more exciting, but I don't think they got a ton more at bats except for a couple guys. Um, all right, John, what else is anything else uh, before? Well, we, we got, we got a, we got a one more sponsor. We got to, uh, I was going to, like, let me uh, make up for uh, your slip up here. I can't believe you did this. Pastime Marketplace has a line of graded card cases that are waterproof, airtight, dust tight, and hardened to protect and organize your valuable collection. Each of our cases come with pre cut and pre formed foam, so you don't have to cut and tear the foam when you get your case. The pre cut foam inserts are sized to hold PSA, Beckett, SGC, and CGS slabs. Store it all safely and securely with a case from Pastime Marketplace. Check them out at www.pastimemarketplace.com. Our excuse to get a quick soda in and talk about how great Pastime cases are. So thank you for reminding me. Yeah, I got to say real quick, I use them when I go to my shows. So that's what uh, that's what carries my cards. I'm not just saying that. That was uh, I actually used the cases before they were a, sp a sponsor. So that's that's the biggest endorsement uh, you can get. Uh, I promise I won't screw up again and not play the intro next week. I will write it a hundred times on the whiteboard uh, behind me. I will not forget to play the intro. Uh, but uh, we'll let you do it next week, Danny. That'll be my punishment. Well, I think that makes you the official Bart Simpson of the two of us then, <laughs> you know, right? Nope. <laughs> uh, well, actually, you have the donuts. That makes you Homer Simpson, you know. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of donuts. And my wife and my son both brought them home from their jobs. Like, uh, you know, I'm trying to eat better, and then they bring, you know, 18 donuts home. So, uh, so much for that theory. Well, on that one, I will play the outro. Uh <laughs> This was uh, we found we hit the uh, the lucky dozen. Is that where we are? Yeah, yeah, and and, and everyone we, we've gotten great feedback too. I know a lot of people probably, like I said, smartly don't have to see uh, the ugly mugs and and downloading the show. So for those folks, we thank you as well. That's more than fine. And for those enough to brave the chat room and looking at us on screen, an extra point of credit uh, for you folks. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, each and every other week, and uh, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for being here. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.